Hey guys and welcome to Nick Grit. In today's video we're going to go over how to make these face mask ear guard or ear like, excuse me, mask mates um, that I've been seeing all over everywhere and basically every little thing. So I've already gone on a little bit of a rant as to why uh, I won't be making any actual crocheted masks. I think that they're misleading and that unless you have a secondary thing to have underneath it and you have a legit mask that you shouldn't be wearing crocheted masks as masks. But I am going to be showing you how to make these really cute little mask mates or ear guards that I am actually going to be making a ton of these. I've got about 60 or so created right now. My limiting factor is buttons. I don't have enough buttons to make as many of these as I would like. I'm going to be donating these to a local hospital to a uh, friend who actually works at a local hospital so that she'll get those to where they need to be. But I'm going to show you how to make these. It's a really super duper easy pattern and if you've got a ton of buttons just laying around, this could be really helpful to those in the medical field or to those who have sensitive ears who are wearing masks because they have to. So the way that it works is you take your mask and you take, instead of having the straps go over your ears, which would be right here, this goes on the back of the head, you take the mask strap and you put it around the buttons so that they kind of pull like that. These are holding that instead and putting pressure on the buttons instead of putting pressure on your sensitive ears. These are a godsend I've heard. I don't work in the medical field and I have been lucky that I don't have to wear a mask that often, but I figured if I've got the cotton and I've got the yarn, I might as well make a butt ton of these, which, you know, is a technical term. So far, I've got about 60 made and with buttons sewn on them. All right, for this pattern, you're going to need some cotton yarn. I'm using a worsted weight cotton yarn that is just the basic whatever cotton you can find will work for this. I am using a H or a size, what are the millimeters on this? I don't know. It says size H or H, which is just the American term for this. I'm gonna post it down here so that you can see what the millimeter edge for this is. Also technical terms. You're going to need a darning needle, which I use for putting all my ends in. And you're going to need some thread and some buttons. I am not gonna be showing how to sew buttons on in this tutorial, but I can do a separate tutorial on how to sew a button if the demand is there post down below if you need me to do that. I might actually just do it anyway and post right after this, so stay tuned for that. I'll link it hopefully in the description or down below um, so you can see that there. I am using these cute little one inch buttons. As you can see, I can use a lot of different types of buttons. I was just using what I had. It can really go based off of style, um, what you like and what you prefer. All right, let's get started. So I'm not sure if Ravelry will let me post a pattern on how to do this, but I'm gonna try. So if there is a pattern, I will link that down below. But I'm doing this in five separate sizes. It seems from everything that I've gathered that the masks that are six inches long are the most popular. And I am also doing this in a size five inch and four inch. Depending on the kind of masks that people have, different sizes can be more comfortable versus other sizes. So I've got four, I've got three different sizes, and I change these based on how many I chain when I'm starting. So essentially all I'm doing for this pattern is I am, for the five inch one, I'm gonna make a four inch one so you can see the middle. But for the five inch one, you're going to chain 26. For the medium one, you're going to chain 21 and for the small one which is four inches you're going to chain 16. it's basically a multiple of five plus one uh, based on how many inches you want to round it so this one is six inches so it is 26 21 and then 16. all separated five five and five so this one has five more than this one and this one has five more than this one if that makes sense so i'm going to make the medium one size just because that's really just kind of in the middle. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna post those over here. I'm going to create a six inch long tail. I'm going to create a slip knot. 
by piecing my work over and picking out my tail and pulling it through. I have a playlist on the basics of crocheting and knitting, which I will post again down below if you are a beginner and this is not making sense to you. I go slower over in those videos. This is just supposed to be a quick little tutorial on how to do this if you are um, interested in crocheting. I put my crochet hook inside and I'm going to chain 21 because I'm making a size medium. So I chain by pulling my yarn through my loops each time. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. You'll also notice that when I crochet, I wrap from the left to the right instead of right to left. That's just what I prefer, but if you crochet the other way, however you chain will work perfectly fine for this pattern. So what I do next is I'm going to skip the very first chain from my hook. So it's chain number 21. I'm going to go into the 20th chain here, wrap and go inside that chain I'm using multicolor yarn so you can see the different chains a little bit more easily. You're going to wrap again. So now you've got three loops on your hook and you're going to do a half double crochet, which is pulling your yarn through all three of those loops. We're going to do that all the way to the end in every single one of these chains until you get to the last chain or the very first chain that you created. So we're going to crochet all the way down, making sure your chain and your um, your chain line is straight. We're going to go back in and half double crochet, half double crochet, just one in every single chain. You'll see that it's starting to create a little bit of a bulky area here and because the color is changing over time I actually like how this looks with variegated yarn it gives it a little bit more personality and it's a bit more interesting of a pattern when you use a variegated yarn variegated just means multicolored and it changes color over the course of the yarn if you didn't know that already some people might not I don't know some people are experts when they come into my video some people are not so I'm just explaining for those that are not we're going to keep half double crocheting all the way down and now we are to the last two we're going to half double crochet into the second from last and now we've got one more where we began we are going to go inside of that chain and place three half double crochets within that single chain a little bit tighter than not. There we go. I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna half double crochet one. Go back inside that same chain two. So now you can see that there's one, two inside one chain. Go back inside and three. Next, we are going to, I'm going to keep my tail as if it is a part of these back chain ridges here. These are the opposite side of the chains that you were working on before. So we're, we were going on this side and chaining and I'm going inside that side of the chain. Now we're going to flip our work and go into the back sides of those chains. I'll show how I mean. But the way that I hide my tail is I act as if this is a part of that piece. So I'm going to wrap and go inside this first one is a little tight because it's just, it just is. I'm gonna squish my yarn into it. There we go. I'm gonna try to show what I mean by that. We're going to keep our tail as if it is between 
our stitches in the yarn, we're going to pull our yarn through and half double crochet through that. I'm gonna wrap, go underneath both the tail and the chain, like so. So this is kind of just staying there. And we're gonna half double crochet again. And we're gonna keep half double crocheting all the way down until we get to the last stitch, which is this one right here. So this little blue stitch right here, that's our last stitch where we started and before we turned and all that. So I like to work my tail for a couple inches of the work just to make sure that it doesn't come loose and try to like wander around. And I'll cut it off once it's the length that I don't What's the length that I don't want anymore? E. There we go. I pull my tail. I'm about halfway through. And since I've worked that tail for the most part, I'm happy with how far along it is. It's not going to come loose now that I've done that. I'm gonna take my scissors. My desk is messy for right now. So I'm gonna use my not cute scissors. I'm going to make sure that I'm not using my working yarn. I'm gonna pull this tail a little bit taut and I'm gonna cut it. And then I'm gonna pull my work and now the tail is completely hidden. I'm gonna get that out of the way. That way we don't have to think about it anymore. And we're just gonna continue half double crocheting all the way down. Until we get to that blue stitch. Or it might not be blue for you, obviously, because you have different color yarn and all that stuff, but until we get to that stitch. When we get there, we're just going to place three half double crochets inside that work. I've seen this pattern everywhere. I've seen so many different people post it. It's not a very like intricate or like hard pattern to do. So I've seen it just about everywhere. I've seen a couple videos as well. It's all over Facebook and I'm very excited that people have come together and are able to actually make something that is useful and safe from what I can tell. It doesn't mess with the seal of the masks from what I can tell so all my issues that I have with the face masks that are crochet covers really they should just be called mask covers when you're crocheted and knitting, your crochet or knitting them but it does it doesn't apply to this and yes I know I'm a little long-winded but I talk a lot so this is how I get it out and that's what I'm gonna do all right so this is my last little stitch here and I'm going to place three half double crochets within and I'm going to place three half double crochets within that single stitch. So I'm going to wrap and go inside the same stitch and go one, same stitch, two, and it creates a little bit of a bump there, three. What I do next in order to finish this off, so this is pretty much done. And the way that I finish it off is because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I like to go into the very first stitch for what would be my next round. And I'm going to single crochet, just one little stitch. I'm going to create a nice good tail. I'm gonna keep my scissors there actually. And I'm going to take my yarn and just kind of pull it through, take the loop, pull it through. I'm going to use my seamless method that I posted in a video two videos back, I want to say. I'll also link that down below. I'm going to be linking all of the things apparently. <laughs> so I take my work and instead of skipping the first stitch like I would usually do for this, I'm going to just go in from the front of your work into the back and pull like that. I don't want to pull too, too tight because I don't want the stitch to, to get too pulled. I'm going to go just like how I would for my other one through the center, but instead of just kind of going through that, I'm going to also go through this little back stitch 
and I'm going to go through the back ridges of all of the stitches previously, if that's making sense. So I go through there and I try to work my darning needle through as many of these stitches as I can get my darning needle to go through for as long as I can because this is me hiding my tail. So I went through the center, went through the center and went all the way through the back. And I'm going to continue two more stitches if I can do it. Now I'm going, it's all bunched up so I've kind of squished it a bunch. I'm going to take my darning needle and pull but not super tight because I want my end goal is to make that little seam look like a stitch. That way you can't tell where it began and where it ended. So that's what I like for as far as how to make it finished and really nice looking. It's gonna be covered by a button anyway, so if you can't figure out how to do that and you just wanna slip stitch off, that's fine. But that's just how I make it look a little bit more seamless. And I do that for a lot of my work. I'm gonna take my tail, it's still kinda of taut, so I'm gonna cut it real quick. And I'm gonna just pull my fabric. That way the tails are all hidden and where they need to be. They're all within the stitches, so they're not coming out unless you really wanna to try to dig them out. Which I don't think you do if you just hit them. So there's that. I'm going to post a tutorial on how to sew on buttons. But other than that, that's pretty much all there is to this pattern. It's super easy. All you have to do is sew on these two buttons on the side. I'm gonna link that down below. I'm gonna try to link them. I'm gonna try to upload them both at the same time, actually, now that I think about it. I'm just gonna do it instead of having people say, yes, I want a button sewing tutorial. I'm gonna do that. So uh, I'm gonna show you how I do that in the next video. So just go ahead and stay tuned and plop down in the description for all the links to everything. I should have it towards the end credits. But really that's all there is to this pattern. Just keep in mind that the six inch ones are the ones that seem to be the most favored. These are started when you chain 26 and then chain 21 for the five inch ones and then for the four inch ones you just chain 16. It's a variant of five stitches across and that's really all there is to this pattern. If you like videos like this, go ahead and like and subscribe. It really does mean a lot. I have been gaining subscribers like crazy and I'm super thankful for it. I haven't been able to do anything with the giveaway for the 20,000 subscribers because we're all in quarantine and I have no idea how to mail things right now and I'm trying really hard to stay home but as soon as things get a little bit less crazy I'm going to be doing a massive giveaway. So stay tuned for that. Do the whole Instagram, Facebook if you like seeing cute crocheted things, if you like stuff like this. Oh, and we have a Patreon too if you guys are interested, uh, if you guys are anybody's interested in that. I'm going to post links and do all that stuff. Alright, until next time guys. Bye!